So by this point, I hope you've got a good understanding of what selections are. It's really important you do and you have a play around with them because now we're going to take the concept of selections one step further and start talking about layer masks. So the idea with layer masks is they will take a selection and kind of make them part of your document. So let's go back to our example here with the green grass. I'm just going to undo the hue selection effect I made in the previous video. Uh, and I'm going to wind back in my undo history to the selection we made with the color range effect. So same point, we've now got that selection from color range on screen. But instead of going into image and hue and saturation and permanently changing the color of the grass here, what I want to do is go back to our principle of non-destructive editing and do the same thing, but leave it in a way where I can come back and change it later. If I come back down here and add a hue saturation adjustment layer, what will happen is that hue saturation adjustment layer will load and it will kind of grab that selection and put it in what's called a layer mask. If you look here, you can see this box on the right of our hue saturation effect. So if you imagine this icon is kind of the effect, this box, this thumbnail is a layer mask. So effectively it is a selection that is applying to this effect. I can come down here in the controls and I can play with those same controls I'll maybe just increase the saturation so you can see what this is doing. And so what this adjustment layer is doing is it's affecting saturation, but it's only affecting it where this layer mask has used that selection to apply to all the layers below it. Another thing you can do with layer masks is use them on layers like photos or boxes or indeed anything you create to cut out parts of the layers and reveal or conceal uh, things you're doing. So say I wanted to add some text. So I can just quickly create a text layer like this. Maybe we'll change the color. We'll do black like that. And what if I wanted to draw a line all the way through it or, or some kind of effect? Well, what I can do with a text layer is add a layer mask. So that's what this button does, which we haven't covered yet. So at the bot bottom of the layers panel, you can click this and add a layer mask. Now, here's the difference. This is completely white. The layer mask on our hue saturation adjustment layer is black, but if you're clicking very, very carefully, you can just see there's a little bit of white and that little bit of white is where the green is of where the effect is uh, showing. So one of the concepts you have to understand with layer masks is what shows and what's hidden. So the phrase is white reveals, black conceals. So with a layer mask like this, that's all white, we're seeing everything. With a layer mask that, like this, that's mostly black, it's not applying the adjustment layer, except for the small areas that are white. So then knowing that knowledge, we can come back to our beach layer mask here and draw on it to hide part of the text here. This is another important concept. Once you start working with layer masks, what you've got to understand is there's effectively two things you can work with. There's the layer itself and there's the layer mask. So you can see what I'm doing is clicking between the layer, in this case the text, and the layer mask. So with the layer mask for the text selected, I could go to the brush tool and change my color here to black because I want to conceal. And so one way you can quickly get black as the active color is to click this little button up here and all that does is switch the foreground and background colors around. So we've got black. I'm gonna reduce my brush size, left bracket. And then all I'm gonna do is just paint through. That's a bit big, might undo that. I'm gonna make this brush a lot smaller. 
But you can see if I just paint on that adjustment layer, it's just hiding part of the text. If you can look very, very closely at that adjustment layer for beach, you can see where I've just painted on this black line. So this is the power of layer masks. Layer masks allow you to make kind of cutouts to photos and other things without making those cutouts permanent to what you're working on. We could go to the photo layer, layer one. Let's rename it, keep ourselves honest. And I could add a layer mask on that as well. And then maybe I wanna paint on that up the top here in the sky. And so what I've done is by painting on the layer mask, I've poked a hole through, if you like, to the background layer. Our background layer here is completely white. So what I could do is fill the background layer, which I can do by going up to edit and fill, choose a different color. Maybe we'll go with something like red, click OK. And now you can see the background is red and that's now poking through where we've painted on the layer mask for the photo. So we've got three different layer masks doing different things in this document. We've got the layer mask on the photo, which we just painted on. We've got the layer mask on the text, which we also painted on. And then we've got the layer mask on this hue saturation effect, which is controlling the hue and saturation on the green of the hills here. So this is the power of layer masks. Now, having shown you that, I'm just gonna show you a couple of other things you can do with layer masks. One thing you're gonna to wanna to sometimes do is actually just see the layer mask and see what it's doing. So if you hold Alt or Option down on your keyboard and then click it, it will actually load the layer mask on screen. What this is showing you is a kind of a black and white representation of what it's doing. So as we said before, white reveals, black conceals. Everything that's white here is going to show through. Everything that's black isn't. I can hold Alt or Option on Mac down again, click it again, and it will go back to your document. If I click to the beach layer, I can do the same thing. Hold Alt down, click that. Now we can see that line I painted. We can go to the photo, same again. One thing that's really important when you're working with layer masks and indeed the layers panel, because once you start getting layer masks into your documents, this is something you've got to keep an eye on. If I have the brush tool here on the photo, so what I might do is just turn off the beach text and the hue saturation. And so we're back to just looking at this photo layer where I've painted on the adjustment layer uh, which is revealing the red. So if I go back to the brush and do a bit more painting, that's just adding to the layer mask. But if I click on the actual photo and paint, it's doing a different thing. So now I'm painting on the photo, not the layer masks. So it's really important you're aware of this. And what you've got to look for is this kind of little box that's shown on the active layer you're working with, what this is telling you is you're about to make changes to the actual layer, the photo, rather than the layer mask. So you've got to be careful with that because it can get confusing if you don't realize what's happening where you may have intended to paint on the photo or intended to paint on the layer mask and did the wrong one by accident. So I'll undo that. Last thing I wanted to show you is a little trick that can come in useful working with layer masks where you may want to move what's in your document around independently of the layer mask. So if we look at our beach text here, what I might do is decide I want to move the beach text on the image, but I don't want to move where I've painted that sort of cutout. So what you'll notice with all of the layers is there's this little link icon between the layer mask and the layer itself. So if I was using the move tool here and drag this around, the whole thing would move. But if I click the link icon, it will take that off. And now I can drag the layer mask around independently if I've got that selected. Or if I click on the text, I can drag that around independently.
So that's another useful little feature to know as well. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.